Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is Station. We are ready for the event. Associated Press, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Space Station, this is the Associated Press. How do you hear me? We've got you loud and clear up here on the International Space Station. How do you hear us? I hear you just fine. Greetings from the Kennedy Space Center on a very chilly morning. Um, let me just start off with uh, saying a big hello and two big stories down here on Earth this morning, Hurricane Sandy and the presidential election. So my first questions will touch on those two subjects. Have you managed to see Hurricane Sandy from orbit? Um, tell me what you've been able to, to glimpse. Yeah, as a matter of fact, yesterday we had a couple orbits which uh, were over the east coast and then the uh, middle of the country, so we got a couple perspectives, a couple views on it. You know, for the last couple days, uh, my folks are from New England, so I'd, I'd heard about it and I wanted to take a look, but the days prior it was just a mass of white clouds, and yesterday we really could see the big swirl, and as it was covering, you know, passed into the Atlantic Ocean all the way practically to Chicago, it's pretty huge. I hope Hope everybody down there is safe and sound. And the other story, the presidential election, I'd like to know um, if you've both voted uh, absentee prior to flight or um, whether you might be doing that from space. Hi, Marcia. This is uh, Kevin Ford, just arrived on board, and uh, I, I personally, I just uh, voted absentee. Uh, I was a military guy and was in the Air Force active for 18 years before coming over to NASA and uh, so voted absentee a lot. Absentee voting is one of those things that's available to many of our troops and citizens overseas and I just used the absentee technique to, to cast my ballot for the presidential election uh, just before I left uh, Kazakhstan to come up here. And Marsha, I did the same thing. Uh, luckily, the window opened right before our launch in July, and I absentee voted from Kazakhstan, just like uh, Kevin and uh, my husband carried the envelope back and put it back in the mail. So uh, both of us have our, our ballots in, and we'll see if uh, we, maybe we pick the right candidate. Now, now Commander Williams, didn't, did I hear you say in a previous interview that you're actually a resident of Florida and that's where you cast your vote? And, and, and Colonel Ford, I'm going to assume you're a Texas resident? Yep, that's correct. I have, was a resident of Florida since I went to flight school, and I'm not going to count how many years ago that was, but uh, I've been a resident of Florida for quite some time. And uh, Sonny can still get by with that because she's active duty military. I actually retired from active duty service about three years ago with uh, 26 years in the Air Force. I'm a little bit older than Sonny is. And uh, at that point, I became a Texas resident, so I did cast my ballot from Texas. Thanks. Thank you for um, helping clear that up. Um, another uh, news, at least big news here on the Space Coast, Atlantis is going to be making its move Friday from the uh, VAB over to the Visitor Center, and it's it's the last shuttle to depart the hangar, um, and it's going to be a it's going to mark a real end for so many of those who stuck it out to the end, only to be uh, getting their pink slips. And I'm, what's your thoughts on the final journey of the final shuttle to leave home here, even though it's not going far? And 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 what would you tell all those uh, men and women who uh, stuck it out and now face unemployment? Well, the first thing I'd tell them is that they made a huge contribution uh, to the progress of this country and the progress of, of mankind, for that matter. So um, what, what they did was a, was a wonderful thing that they did in their life. Um, we all feel that way about the shuttles. Uh, it's, it's great to see them all safely getting to their, um, their final places where people can come visit them and, and see those uh, shuttles firsthand and uh, really admire them and think about uh, what we did for 30 years in the shuttle program. So um, 
uh, as far as you know, changing changing careers and all that sort of thing that ha that happens to all of us uh, in the military. Sometimes the th things change and we have to make transitions to new career fields. Those people are all super talented, and hopefully, we find a, a great place for them to make uh, contributions. If it's not in our future space program and in other areas of technology, they're all really super well qualified to go out there and do many many other things and and contribute to the economy. So that, that's what I would say to them. And they're all uh, wonderful people. And, and we want to keep them, keep them in the family if we can. And, uh, Got anything to add? Yeah, just be proud of the work they've done. I mean, yeah. we wouldn't be here on the International Space Station if it wasn't for the successful work of the space shuttles bringing all these modules up here. So uh, it was the workhorse for 30 years. Um, but things change, and it's time to move on to new technology. And those, guys, those people are primed to jump in it if they want to jump back into the, the space business. But like Kevin said, I'm sure there's many places that their talents would be wanted and desires. And we can't thank them enough for the work that they've done. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, Commander Williams, you're going to be setting the bar even higher t uh, later this week for women spacewalkers. Um, any extra risks you're going to be taking out there since you're dealing with an ammonia leak and, and the location is rather elusive? Well, I think the, the biggest risk is uh, we don't know everything about uh, the situation, the problem that's out there. And uh, I think there's going to be, we, we have a great plan on uh, board right now. We've got a great EVA team and flight control team and systems team who's been working on this ammonia problem. Um, and we're going to do our best to uh, do the procedures that they tell us to do. We have a lot of extra procedures just in case things don't go exactly as planned. Uh, but we've dealt with ammonia before. On my uh, first couple spacewalks last time I was up here, it's sort of interesting. We retracted this exact radiator that we're going to deploy, and so we dealt with ammonia lines. And we did go through all the procedures that are tested out for um, ammonia problems. So I have great confidence that uh, you know we're going to get get out there, give it our best shot. Hopefully, f fix this problem. Probably make the station in a better state than it is right now in regards to that radiator. And then we'll learn a lot and see uh, what the next step is. So I'm not worried about the ammonia per se. Uh, we've done, we've been down this road before. Uh, speaking of, of risks, I'm wondering, are you taking any extra precautions or doing anything differently because of the recent breakup of the Russian breeze upper stage? I'm, what's the latest on um, that debris? Well, the folks on the ground take care of all that for us. Uh, on, on board, we, uh, of course, place all of our trust in the ground teams. The space station is flown by the, the ground, and we're just up here to be uh, the, the hands, ears, and eyes at the, at the point of the experiments. And so they, they watch in the situation all the time. They track as much of the debris as they can. There is a new procedure that um, is just on board. Uh, we were just talking about it a few days ago to do a quick reaction debris avoidance maneuvers that we didn't have before. So this is just one more step, you know, in, in the evolution of, uh, of learning to fly safely in space, for humans to fly safely in space. And, and we have this procedure now, and if uh, ground calls us up and asks us to execute it, it's coordinated. The, the Russians actually, the Russian segment provides the reboost, and we get everything all situated, and uh, we can get out of the way of debris in a, in a hurry. But as far as the, the actual materials itself and the cloud, that's just uh, something handled by ground so that we can uh, worry about our everyday tasks on board. Uh, Colonel Ford, how 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 much of a heads up? How close could you cut it for the, one of these new um, maneuvers? Uh, an hour or two hours or even less? Yeah, I uh, hate to go out too much out on a limb. I, I think it's 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 several hours, but uh, three or four hours, maybe uh, maybe just a little bit more. Not exactly certain about that, but uh, it's a it's a lot better than it used to be, which was uh, which was probably about 24 hours in advance. So. We've come, uh, we made a big step there. Well, um, also I'd like to know for my last question, tomorrow's uh, Halloween. Happy Halloween to you both. Are you going to be uh, dressing up, trick-or-treating? What, what are your plans as you uh, get ready for a holiday, if you have time, that is? Well, uh, we're going to have somebody come on our uh, arrive at our doorstep, uh, knock on wood, we hope, in four orbits, and hopefully they'll be bringing lots of treats. Uh, we'll see. Progress. The progress will be here. Um, so that will be sort of neat. Um, for us, uh, we're going to see. I've, I've sort of 
challenged everybody to see if we have any type of costumes we want to wear. And, and of course, I think you know, a lot of people know my little dog, Gorby, and he's, uh, he's actually Dracula, very appropriately dressed uh, for uh, Halloween this year. Well, uh, safe, safe trip home, Commander and Colonel Ford. Uh, uh, good luck on your next six months, and uh, God speed to you both. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Marcia. Great talking with you. Thanks, Marcia. As station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the Associated Press portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from the Weather Channel, and you will be speaking to Kyla Grogan. Station, this is the Weather Channel. How do you hear me? Developed as all of this coming coming to be a bit difficult, I'm sure, to be that far away. I don't think we're on, we're on the air yet. Go ahead, then. Answer the International State Space Station hears the Weather Channel loud and clear. How do you hear us? Latest that we have. QSL 555, stand by for producer or talent. Eastern Maryland was closed this morning due to heavy snow. The Washington Post reporting 10 homes damaged in Alexandria, Virginia by falling trees and roofs were... They'll be getting to you in just a moment. ...in the city. In southeast Pennsylvania, the Transit Authority uh, attempt will be made to restore some subway service this afternoon. Of course, so many having a difficult time here. A six-alarm fire that destroyed between... Eight we'll be coming to you momentarily. In Breezy Point, Queens has been containing firefighters uh, having a difficult time this morning. So we are now going to uh, talk to, we are going over to the International Space Station, and NASA temporarily repurposed its tropical rainfall monitoring satellite to grab 3D views of the eye of the storm. Coming to you momentarily. Video sent back, well, they really just make you say, wow. This morning, joining us live from high above the Earth in the International Space Station, Commander Suni Williams and Flight Engineer Ken Ford, good morning to you. Good morning from the International Space Station. How is everybody doing down there? I hope everybody's uh, safe and dry after the hurricane. Well, we are certainly uh, having a bit of a rough ride here this morning, but we're happy to see you this morning. Now, you had an unparalleled view of the massive storm. What did it look like from space when you were looking at this uh, as Sandy was coming together? Well, you know, I was pretty interested in it. My folks are up in the Northeast, and uh, they had asked the same question. Hey, do you see it coming? Do you see it coming? Because I think people down south are starting to get some of the rain and the, and the storm surge. And I kept looking out the window for a couple days, and all I saw was this major mass of white. But then yesterday, it was really defined. We had a couple orbits over the Northeast and then the middle of the country. You could really see the swirl and, uh, the, you know, the pretty close to the middle of the hurricane, and it was just massive. Like I said, uh, the cloud cover was, like, from the Chicago area all the way over into the Atlantic. And, uh, you know, there's people down there that were, were suffering a lot of wind and rain and snow, and uh, we're safe and sound up here, and we're just hoping they're all okay down there. Absolutely. Now, I know NASA's been tracking the storm with satellites. Can you tell us more about the different satellites and the perspective they're giving scientists, the view that they are getting from this because of those satellites? Um, well, of course, the, you know, the weather, the weather satellite systems, uh, both that NASA has and the military have, um, when, when something like that happens, the storms uh, come up. A lot of them uh, can be trained and uh, and watch it, and it's a, it's a great capability we have. Um, we don't really get that information on board the space station. What what the other um, satellites are doing, uh, we have other things uh, that we're tasked to do uh, during the day, but we we do occasionally just get asked to take some uh, some video or some uh, photos of it and provide any information we can. Uh, to help them out, but as far as uh, what the other assets are out there are doing, uh, we're not we're not afraid to wear that on a on a day to day basis. All right. Well, we certainly thank you for the work that you're doing for us. Uh, that would be Commander Suni Williams and Flight Engineer Ken Ford. And now over to Mike and Carl at the expert desk. What a cool view for sure, mm -hmm. Kyla. Thank you very much. And you know, we don't often get that perspective. You know. As station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you, Associated okay, thank Press you. and the Weather Channel Station. We are now resuming normal operational audio communications. 